one of the main challenges to his reign has been his brother, yeah. Prince Andrew. And Netflix, yet again, have, uh, have, have come out, obviously, after you know, their, um, The Crown and the, the series with Meghan and Harry. We now have uh, Scoop, which we've seen, we've managed to quickly watch before we, uh, before we sat down today. It's a good drama. Do, do we need this, this drama? Does, this, does Charles of the King, does he need, you know, um, more scandal from, from his brother? Or we had a, has he had enough of, I, of this with Andrew? I don't think the king and the rest of the royal family need it, but I think uh, we do, because I certainly, and I'm sure many others as well, I've always been fascinated how Newsnight got this story. Um, and I have to tell you that I think Billy Piper plays a blinder as Sam McAllister. Now, she's the producer who went out of her way to court the palace, um, Keely Hawes as Amanda Thirsk, his bri private secretary, is brilliant. She performs it brilliantly well, like a startled rabbit caught in the headlights most of the time. Uh, Gillian Anderson as Emily Maitlis is also, uh, you know, very, very good. Um, I, I think it is an excellent, by, you know, narrative of what actually went on. And there's one scene, I'm not going to spoil it for everybody, but there is one scene in it which just sums up Prince Andrew to a T, and that is when the Emily Maitlis and Sam, Sam McAllister are sitting opposite Andrew, trying to encourage him to do this interview. And he suddenly says towards the end, he says, I don't know why people are so fascinated by my friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. After all, I knew Jimmy Savile far more. And you just think, <laughs> what? Why would, you, why would you say that to journalists, you know, at a start off? Um, but it's an, an excellent, it's an excellent, uh, um, it's an excellent program. And I have to say to you that you know people are going to say, "Oh, this is going to drive another nail in Andrew's coffin." I'm not that sure that there's much room for any more nails in that coffin, you know. And I think people have got to realise because we keep seeing him at maybe the Easter ceremony or something else to do with the family or, or whatever, and they think, oh, he's on his way back. He's never coming back. He's never going to do another royal job ever again. You know, and I just wish people would stop just jumping on a, a bandwagon because they saw him leading the royals down to the east, one of the, the, the services. The only reason he was in front is because he was out the door first. It's that simple. It's not any rocket science. The monarch always comes in. Uh, or the, the the queen always comes in at the at the end. It's always the rules. Another headache, obviously, for uh, the king is is his son. Yeah. Um, in California now, we believe that Harry and Meghan might be coming over for uh, an Invictus Games ten year um, church, and service. A, a church service. Uh, look. What do you think about about this? They're, 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 they're more than, than a headache, aren't they, to the king at the moment? Um, Huge headache, um, absolute huge headache. You know, you, you you don't know whether you can trust... Har well, he, I'm pretty sure they know that they can't trust Harry uh, uh, and Meghan. When I know, I'm pretty certain that Harry is going to be here because it's Invictus Games and it's his baby. So I'm sure he will be at the church service. Whether Meghan comes, um, I'm not terribly sure. I'm, I'm of the opinion that Meghan won't set foot in the UK ever again. And then there's the other big question. If she does come, and if I'm wrong, if she does come, uh, will she bring the children? Why well, don't you think she'll ever step foot in this Because country, I just yeah. don't think she wants her to have anything to do at all with this country. Look, let me tell you, I was a big, big supporter of Meghan right at the start. I thought... Uh, I liked the, the cut of her jib, everything. I thought she was fantastic. And if you saw her with Harry on some of those walkabouts that they did and some of those early jobs before the wedding, the people were thronging the streets. There wasn't anybody shouting any racial slurs or anything like that. It was all joy because they were seeing the new young couple, the new future for the monarchy. Not going to be king or queen, but they were going to be key aides mm -hmm. all the way through. And they were the ones who decided, well, Meghan was the one who decided she didn't want to be on this road. I don't believe that she, she understood the pecking order of the royal family. You've got the monarch, you've got the, the, the Prince of Wales, and then you've got everyone else under that. She wanted to be the star. And that, I think it was that simple that she thought she just picked up her toys and decided to go off to America. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what kind of public reaction oh. they would get. I remember at the uh, the Jubilee, 
I think Harry and Meghan came back and they attended St Paul's Cathedral mm. for a church service and there was so I was there, there were some cheers, there were some boos. People were quite respectful because it was, you know, the Queen's um, Queen's Jubilee. But um, you're right, I mean, uh, th th Meghan didn't seem to show much interest, I suppose, into... She didn't give it enough time, maybe, no. to actually be a working royal. I don't actually think she'll get that huge a reception from the public if she, if she does come back. And I think that may well be one of the factors that she may well be considering. Yeah, as I say, I might be wrong. She might just brass it out and come 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 over. Best of luck to her if she does. Mm. Now, obviously, uh, Meghan and and Harry uh, have talked about the the wedding and the, and the you know the, the joy that happened there. But it's actually twenty years this week since uh, the news has broken that Prince William had a new girlfriend, which was then uh, well, Catherine Middleton. Um, I get a lot of comments, by the way, on, 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 on this show on YouTube where I get told off for saying Kate. So I'm going to try now to call her Catherine. I'm with you. I you think you should call her Catherine. <laughs> you yeah. call her Catherine. Yeah. Give her that respect. <laughs> um, but it, it's 20 years. Now, you would have been working then. Yep. When, um, what, what was it like? Because they, they met at St Andrews. Say, 20 years ago, the news broke that, that they were a couple. They did meet at St Andrews. And St Andrews was a no-go area, in effect, for as uh, the you know newspapers and that was new at the time was it it I was suppose? completely new it was an agreement that was reached um with uh, the palace that uh, he wouldn't be hassled uh, there were some paparazzi who did go on the streets and try and get them but largely he was left alone but we did get to hear that he'd got this new girlfriend uh, and this new girlfriend had actually moved into the house, was one of the flatmates of Prince William, there were two others, uh, two guys, and, Will, and Catherine had moved in as well. Uh, and then you got to hear about uh, this new girlfriend, and of course, as you do with a new girlfriend, you went do lally, and you tried to find out everything you could about her. Um, but they were largely left alone for a very, very long time, so they had plenty of time to get to know each other. Unlike, of course, you know, his mother and the Prince of Wales, mm. uh, the then Prince of Wales. So, I mean, she, she was thrown right into it all. Yeah, I mean, the difference there was, I mean, I remember seeing, actually, I remember seeing for both Diana and Catherine, um, photographers chasing her down the sure. street. But I think with Catherine, it was later in it her was. relationship. But r reporting on um, William and Catherine at the time, do, do, you, think, do you think reporting of... of, of of royal couples has changed since then, or it changed since Diana and Charles, and then to Catherine and William, didn't it? I think it has changed, um, you know, a great a great deal. Um, some would say for the better. Uh, you have to remember as well that when the royal women came, uh, or women came into the royal family, like Diana and the Duchess of York, Sarah, Sarah the Duchess of York, um, they were just thrown in. They were they were not. not not given any help or anything at all. The difference between them and Catherine and uh, Meghan was immense. You know, Catherine was helped as well. Andrew, uh, uh, Andrew, sorry, um, um, William uh, made it clear right at the start, don't mess her about. And he's telling these royal A's, don't mess her around, you know, help her. And he, so he put his foot down, unlike Charles with Diana, unlike Andrew with Fergie. 